Next.js 16 introduced new cache components. And in this video, I'll show you how they work and how you can start using them in your projects. I built this small demo app just for this video to make everything super clear. But before we jump in, let's take a second to thank our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Next.js Weekly. If you want to stay on top of all things Next.js updates, tutorials, cool community stuff, then this is the newsletter for you. Every week they send the most important news so you don't waste time digging around. I love how short and easy it is to follow and yeah, it's totally free. Just sign up to the newsletter and you'll not miss anything. Link is in the description. And now let's dive in. What we have here is an XJS 16 project, but it is not using cache components yet. So if we check our Next.js config, we can see that we don't have yet cache components true. So let's see how does it behave now currently with our data fetching. If we go to our main page, we can see here that we are fetching this data from our API. It's using some fake SQLJS API to get all those categories that we saw here on our main landing page. So Currently, we are simulating a delay of two seconds. And let's see how does it behave. So here, if we go to localhost, we are waiting for two seconds and then we are getting our entire page. So we don't want that. We are waiting here for our API to finish its call, but we don't need to force all other items in our UI to wait for these categories. So we need to wait only for this part right here. Everything else, our navbar, our footer, everything can be displayed before we even get this data. Another piece of data that we are fetching in this project are these GitHub stars. You can see right here 1.1k stars, that's from my ABCM project, and we are pulling them inside of the stars count component. So here, we are using the simple fetch, but we are revalidating and caching it for one day. So this is the old way of doing it. We want to implement the new cache components way. So let's start the implementation. First thing we're going to do, we're going to the official documentation by Next.js for cache components. And first thing we need to enable them. So we need to put inside of our Next.js config, we can see it here that we need to enable cache components. So we need this line right here. I'm going to my Next.js config and I'll put it instead of this comment right here, cache components true, and let's see what happened now inside of our application. We have here some issue and that's that uncached data was accessed outside of suspense. This is the new warning from Next.js 16. If you turn on cache components for every piece of fetch data, you'll get this warning right here if it's not under suspense. So Next.js basically detected this call right here inside of our landing page with this API and they are forcing us to put suspense here so we don't have that delay on our whole page. And let's do that. I'll create quickly a new component and I'll call it categories because we are basically calling categories here from our API. Let's just define this one quickly and we'll move all these things. So this get categories function plus this return gallery and all those stuff. I'll just paste it inside of the new categories. And we also need all these types and the gallery and all that stuff like this. Nice. So now we have basically exactly the same thing like in our page, but on our page, we'll heal, remove everything like this, and we'll put here that new categories thingy like this. Nice. So this is good. Now we have exactly the same thing. We just moved it to another component. We are still waiting for two seconds, but now we'll wrap this one up inside of suspense and I even created a new fancy gallery skeleton for that one like this nice and let's test it out now so now we are here when I refresh we are getting everything except the categories component and we are getting that fancy skeleton while we are waiting for our data to be fetched I'll refresh again so you can see so check out how awesome is this. 
So everything else is on our screen. We don't have that delay of two seconds. Instead of that, we have our nav bar, everything except the part that we are waiting for, and that's this categories data. And this is perfect for runtime and dynamic data. So whenever you have some data that is changing really often, and it is really important to update it each time you're fetching it, you will use this suspense. And you can see it everything, of course, inside of the documentation. So we are using suspense for runtime data and for dynamic data. I'll leave you all the links in the comments below will not read documentation right now and also you have this github repository and everything you need but let's see now what should we do with this famous use cache this one is used for stale data or better to say it as the data that is not changing often and that's where we have our github star so this is the perfect example because you don't have to refetch this piece of data every time somebody lands on your page you can do it just once in 24 hours so let's see how to do that we are going back to our code and we are going to the stars count component and here we can see that i did before this revalidation in seconds which is one day 86,400 seconds. So what we can do now, let's remove this revalidation thingy right here. And if we check the stars count, where is it used in the nav bar, we can see that it is under suspense. So let's see the behavior right now if we refresh. So here it is. Check out now, I refresh now. So you can see that we are loading this one with suspense, same like we are doing for the categories. And this one is okay, but we want to make it to be cached for 24 hours or even more or less depending on what we need. So now we are going back to our stars count and everything we need to do is just use cache like this. So now we go back again and if I refresh, I refresh, you can see it it is always there and every time we refresh this data is pre-rendered and it cannot be faster and more performant than this and now we need that one day part and we're going again to the documentation we're searching for the lifetime and we have here something that is called cache life so how to use it we just need to put in this import cache life from next cache and we are doing it right here and then we are just putting cache life to hours. Now, what does that mean? We have here a whole table. So by default, stale data, five minutes, revalidate 15, expire in one year. Then we have seconds. So this is if you need some like really fast data, but not like too fast, like that dynamic data with suspense. We have minutes, hours, days, weeks, and we even have this max, which is 30 days. So this is really useful and this is really awesome and one more thing about this use cache it doesn't need to be inside of our component right here it can be also on the file level so this one is also the same like here it's caching it but if we had another component inside here and this one would as well be cached so here if we call this one stars count 2 we can put use cache to be used only for the stars count 2 and note not for the stars count 1 so we can choose what are we going to cache and same for functions so we could use this use cache for some heavy work functions and put it to cache and to have some stale data if we need it on some functions as well and the final result is that we have one really fast landing page when i reload we have all these pre-rendered things before our data comes in so we even have this stale data right here for our github stars and that one is pre-rendered with everything else before this dynamic data this is something that makes your app much smoother and users really appreciate this kind of experience when they're using your applications i hope you enjoyed in this video if you have any questions i'm always online on my discord channel or on twitter so just ping me and for more content like this join the mighty horde subscribe